Well, I just found out that this is the most wish list game on Steam. According to an article I read, Manor Lords is hot, baby. And it's awesome. Lots of fun to play. And you're here for another video. Well, hello again there, friends and fans. Raptor here. Welcome to a little bit of a city that we were building in one of our previous live streams. By the way, don't forget to subscribe and turn on that notification bell for more of Manor Lords. It's kind of an end game city here as the demo allows us to essentially build within one region and build all sorts of different uh, buildings including the homes and uh, smithies and even kind of like a little fort area up here. This is kind of an experimental city which is why it's uh, mostly a gridlock city. It's uh, something that I was trying to figure out how many houses we could fit in a certain area. And so I wanted to share some information with you today on things that I've learned in Manor Lord so far and give you some endgame tips of most frequently asked questions and ways to build the biggest and best cities, at least in order to reach the end goal of basically completing the level two upgrades for some of your homes. So if you've been playing Manor Lords or if you're going to get started, eventually you'll reach a goal where it'll ask you to upgrade your homes to level two. And as you can see here, we have like 14 additional homes that are ready to upgrade. And the upgrading kind of works like how it does in Anno 1800 or in games like the Sierra a series of Emperor Rise of the Middle Kingdom or Pharaoh uh, or whatnot. So essentially at the bottom here, you see the tab for food, clothing, entertainment, and faith. And so the end goal, and also water and f uh, fuel there, and so the end goal is to provide them with at least everything that they want within the green area. Now, as it says here, uh, the uh, kind of the darker circle, or <laughs> the darker diamonds is actually requirements not met, so it's not something that they necessarily need at the moment. Um, green is required for the next residential level upgrade. So once this house is upgraded to level two, then new uh, green diamonds will appear. And then red is required for next residential upgrade will cause a loss of approval if not fulfilled. This could also cause death because without food, uh, well, f basic food, fuel, and water, uh, they're going to die to death. And that's not something you want to happen. So essentially, here's how to complete all of those goals in Manor Lords. Every time that you start in a region, you might have different types of supplies. So here in Raptoria, we have ourselves several deposits of berries that are harvestable between spring and late summer, maybe even early autumn. The other food type is wild animals, and we could also use that in conjunction with salt, too, to make salted uh, meat once we hunt them. Now, one of the best setups and what I would recommend in Manor Lords for you to do is if you see berries and if you see wild animals, that's a good setup. You want kind of both food source. But if you just see one or the other, especially just berries, berries seems to be the hardest start because they're only harvestable within a certain uh, period of the year, pretty much between late spring and late or early autumn. Animals can be hunted year round, but of course they take a little bit of uh, time to come back. 41 means that there's about 41 deer here. So once you kind of get started with gathering food, you'll eventually have to switch away from these sources. And so switching to farming is probably one of the most challenging episodes of the game. It's kind of like a big challenge. It's uh, the next chapter in expanding your city. And so what I've seen from all of my friends, other creators so far is that everybody's kind of trying to figure out how to gently switch gears between the natural food source of berries and uh, game to actual farming and vegetable farming, etc. So here's a great way to get your food up, by the way, to make sure everybody has food and then eventually multiple food types. That's what they're asking for here, by the way, is two different types of food. As you can see, this house is upgraded to level two. We can only upgrade the houses to level two. So once you've completed upgrading three houses to level two, that's essentially the end of the game with nothing else that you can do. So keep in mind that you'll not be able to go to other regions even if you have the influence to do so. As it says, you can claim with influence, but the demo uh, kind of doesn't say that it's restricted, but you can only control one territory. So keep in mind, you won't be able to go to a neighboring city in order to get some of the supplies you might need, like for example, a game. So once you've started to gather some berries and meat, you can also start buying or importing tools through the trader and then you can start building vegetable gardens in the backyards of these homes. Additionally, you can also build chicken coops and you can also build goat sheds in the back of these houses. Now, it will cost a little bit of money. Here we have 128 silver, so you can easily, and this is pretty much for free at the moment in the demo, uh, it, it costs nothing to do aside from the initial build. So if you build multiple chicken coops, they'll produce eggs with no expense for food like, for example, they don't need grain. So that's a great way to be able to get eggs 
and also milk. So with a little bit of cash and a little bit of trading, for example, if you have a mining pit and you're exporting iron ore like I am, and eventually making tools and exporting those as we're doing now, then you can easily build all sorts of different gardens. This is the only way to farm additional food in the back of these homes. So keep in mind that there's only so many things that you can grow at the farm fields, mostly cereals, right? Mostly grains. So if you're trying to grow vegetables, if you want eggs and if you want milk, you'll have to have goat uh, sheds, chicken coops, and also vegetable gardens, which seem to have carrots and cabbages and such in them. So that'll provide about almost a one-to-one -one food ratio for a while. Um, right now we have 543 vegetables, so not all of these houses have farms. So I'm not exactly sure what the ratio is, but that will definitely help distribute food around your homes. And also, you can upgrade your granary from a level one to a level two. If you click on it, there's a button there, and then you can hire more people to easily uh, get more food to basically sell that at the houses. Pretty good. Or at least to bring it to the market. So those three buildings there will help you to distribute all that food and it's gonna be awesome. So keep in mind that that's certainly helpful to build a market and distribute food that way. All right, the next thing that you'll need to uh, complete is clothing. So in order to complete the clothing issue, you'll need to provide them cloth, leather, or yarn. Now, leather is probably the easiest to get. If you have hunting lands, you can set up a hunting tent and then you can start building a tannery. The hunting tent and the tannery are very easy to build. The hunting tent will give you pelts. The tannery will convert that to leather, and then leather can be sold to the people in order to make their own clothing. They can make their own clothes at home. Here's your hunting camp. Now I set up the hunting camp here on the edge to see if we could go and harvest from another region, but it looks like the game won't let you cross borders. So even if you set up a hunting camp on the edge, uh, your people will not go over to where the animals are and hunt them. So just keep that in mind as well. So when it comes to farming, right, we need to farm flax in order to make linen and we need to have a weaver workshop in order to turn that into fabric. So with a flax field, which here takes about seven people to work, which is why it's really end game stuff to be able to uh, essentially have almost a population of maybe 25 to 35, maybe even 50 people, depending on what you've got going on. Keep in mind that you'll need quite a bit of people to make quite a lot of flax in order to keep them happy. And keep in mind the uh, crop rotation as well. When it comes to crop rotation in this game, whether you're making barley for beer or whether you're making flax for clothing, you'll want to rotate your crops in between. So that means a field of follow at least uh, between the second year. It's essentially this allows for the field to regain its fertility and kind of stave off the ending of um, over farming it, which means that it won't be very uh, producing it anymore. The yield will disappear. It's not going to make as many um, flax as it used to. So keep in mind that this in 162 days will make 13 uh, flax, which creates quite a bit of clothing. That's a pretty good uh, thing there to have. You can also check fertility when you go to the uh, building menu. You can check for emmer fertility, which is essentially wheat. Flax, which is for linen. You can see that it's plummeted now since we'll need to have more fertility there. It used to be good, so now we've got to kind of cut off our flax production for a little bit and start doing a little bit more fallow. So make sure you check on this too. And then our barley production, which, yeah, used to be good, but now we got to go for a few more years of uh, buffer crops. Or either A, farm something else completely, or B, because they use different types of nutrition, or just shut it down by having fallow fields, which essentially is like just grass and clover and other things that... Uh, perhaps animals can come and eat on, but they actually have their own little pens like the sheep here. All right, so once flax is created, remember it'll automatically be shipped to your weaver workshop and then turned into cloth. And then the cloth will be shipped to your people, and it'll be the same with wool too. Wool will turn into yarn and will be shipped to your people too, so long as you have a clothing uh, area up here. Uh, good idea, you don't necessarily need to, but it seems to be like a, a better way to distribute goods. By having a salesperson there, it seems like things just get distributed easier. I'm not sure exactly if you need to have that, but it might be a good idea to have because the end game, when it's fully released, might have you do that. So at this point, you should have two food groups. Let's say that you're hunting and you're also farming vegetables. You have two clothing uh, groups. Let's say that you're hunting, so you're making leather, or that you have linen. But let's say you don't have linen because of fertility, or let's say you don't have leather because you don't have animals to hunt. You're gonna have to import sheep then. 
So in order to import sheep, you're going to have to go over to your livestock trading post. And in order to get money in this game, you're going to want to have a trading post and a livestock trading post. You're going to want to build both of these. The trading post here can function as a sales point for a lot of your excess goods. So things like, for example, that extra leather or pelts or iron ore or clay. You can sell a lot of those raw resources, which I believe they are infinite right now. But eventually, I'm sure the developer will make sure that they're finite as they balance a few more things. They'll eventually run out. So you can sell all that stuff here for money. And then you can import sheep here. This is how you can also do it with oxen, too. And this is a great way to transport grain. Once you uh, have enough money, 10 uh, silver for each oxen, you can go ahead and import only on the oxen or import only on the sheep. Here I've... Uh, Asked for 10 sheep, and here I've asked for 4 oxen. Oxen will help to transport grain and logs, so it really helps with your wood industry and your construction to have more than one oxen. They're a little spendy, but at the start you can uh, immediately start exporting things like firewood or extra maybe food that you might not need, although that's going to be really rare. Not recommended to sell anything other than raw resources that you can't process, and certainly not like food, and maybe not firewood, although you got to be kind of more of a uh, a little bit more experienced with a run like that to just kind of keep an eye on your constant firewood supply. For example, here we have 40, and it's kind of growing now that it's spring. It's March of like our seventh year or something like that. So we've got about uh, maybe nine people cutting down trees and uh, gathering firewood. So that's a great thing for us to sell over here at the trading post. But you'll probably want to keep readjusting that each year. One of the biggest money makers in the game could possibly be candles. I haven't seen those yet, but if you have honey bees or maybe a clay deposit nearby, you could probably sell the honey, and you could probably make... A, well, actually, I don't think there's a way to make candles yet in the game. Um, or maybe even harvest the honey bees. Not sure if there's any sort of apiary that you can build. Not sure if there's a way to actually harvest that resource, but clay there certainly is with the uh, clay mine that you can build. I got a lot more to experience, so it's very exciting. A lot more to do. So now you should at least have two types of clothing, right? Now you've got your sheep going, to which you built your sheep farm. Just one person to take care of them, to be able to shear the sheep, which sheep shearing does not take place in the winter. Keep in mind that um, in order to keep the sheep warm, they don't get sheared in the winter months. Only during the spring through the fall. So that'll create wool there, and then that'll get picked up by the weaver. So you'll have your pasture here, then your farm where they'll be sheared, then that wool can go straight to the weaver workshop. And then that can be shipped to your homes. So in this case, we have three types of uh, clothing coming in, or at least we could by importing leather. That's another thing you could do too. If you're short and want to just complete the goal, you can always just buy a little bit of leather and start selling it at the homes. All right, let's start talking about faith, which is rather easy. This one you could probably almost uh, start with if you haven't accidentally completed the food goal by just having two food resources going and having two of those marked. Faith is probably the next easiest one to do, which is basically building a church. And that's pretty much it. The church is a little spendy. I think it takes maybe eight material, which could be a lot at the very beginning. But under the Village Life tab, at the very end, it is eight construction costs to build the church. And it's a larger building, so you can go ahead and plop it down. But it'll function without an employee, and it will function without candles, which I'm assuming is what it wants at the very bottom. So... At the, bare, uh, at the very bottom where it says generic, I think that might just be candles. That's the only thing I could think of that the church might need in order for storage. And since nobody works there, it's kind of like an incomplete uh, thing at the moment. Game's still in development, of course. So the demo of the early access uh, 0.5.11 is uh, basically just a building that generates faith by people being able to come to it but nobody actually has to service the building or provide anything. So that's a very easy one there. So you should have your food taken care of, your clothing taken care of, and your faith taken care of. But what about entertainment? Well, entertainment is provided only by a tavern when it has beer or ale. So the tavern here, which, by the way, did you know you could do this? The visit mode in the upper right corner. Not only is it a great place to uh, practice your dance moves. Oh, yeah. Get down with it. <laughs> but of course it's the only place to be able to sell beer and ale and I don't think it actually generates funds but that is something I'd like to see in the game is uh, if you're selling goods it'd be great if there was a way to generate wealth by sir 
That's weird. I'll, uh, someone cover that up, please. Ma'am, could you take that down to the... Okay. Ma'am? Never mind. Anyway, this is going to be the only place to be able to sell those goods. So you can see here we have ale. And there is hops in the game, and there is the ability to harvest uh, barley and turn that into a malt. And that's going to be kind of the only way to make that at the moment. Again, a lot of things are workaround-wise. So you can see here up under commodities, I believe, item ID underscore 166 is hops. So I think that'll be something that we can eventually grow and or import. Below the hops, too, there's a barrel. So I think a lot of the production here is a little bit simplified for the time being. But I think eventually we might need a cooper to make barrels. And then we might uh, need to be able to grow or import our own hops for certain types of... Uh, there is beer and ale currently, but there could be more drinks in the future. I'd like to see an orchard, for example, to have cider. But anyway, the way to do this currently is to have yourself... Kind of a reverse engineer might help. If you build your tavern somewhere near your town, which is a very good idea, you could build your tavern near your town where it can service a lot of people here on the main road, which we can't delete, by the way, the King's Road, the roads that already pre-exist in the game, you'll need to build next to. You can't uh, delete them or adjust them. So uh, we built our tavern here next to the busy road, but also the town. So beer and ale will come from our brewery, which will take malt and turn that into ale. And then how do we make malt? Well, we can build another building known as the Malt House. And the Malt House here will take those types of... Um, grain and roast them so that will come from the a barley field down here which of course we've got to adjust things I think the number here is fertility so we've got to adjust that a bit this was really a challenging map by the way so if you start just keep in mind that uh, as a side note make sure you check all your fertilities at the start of the game and also uh, these berries and things are random so each time that you play a region could be better or worse based on what randomly spawns. So berries randomly spawn, animals randomly spawn, clay and uh, stone pits and honey and all that stuff. The bees themselves will spawn uh, differently like that. So just keep that all in mind. So once you've got your barley going, it goes to the malt house, malt house, a malt house to the brewery, brewery to the tavern. And then that should be all three goals, or rather four goals, but it should be the uh, remaining uh, two that you need. The faith in the entertainment so once that's provided you can click the upgrade to level two or it's as it's called here the leave two and once you click that it'll cost four timber to upgrade that so essentially your oxen will have to drop by four times and drop off four timber and then of course the construction will have to take place too now when you get to a tier two building once you've created a tier two house here's the difference between them wooden shingles It's kind of hard to tell the difference, but the building's a little taller, a little bigger, and it has a chimney, too. Now, a cool thing is, it looks like there's other things that we can do for upgrades, but it takes some materials that we might not be able to get at the moment. So it looks like it might take clay bricks plus five money. So it might be... We have the option to destroy the previous vegetable garden. And I'm not sure what this top one is, but it looks like blacksmithing, maybe? We could do at-home blacksmithing. We could do something about at-home brewing. Uh, maybe a seamstress or something to do with uh, sewing and then also shoemaking so we can actually turn leather into shoes Which could sell for a lot of money now a lot of things here in the game are incomplete And I haven't seen these types of things available to buy or sell in the um, in the shop So I haven't seen shoes at all. So I I'm sure that once you reach a level 2 house That's pretty much it. It doesn't hold any more people. It just it looks better It's just an expense in order to complete one of those final objectives so keep that in mind some of your first objectives of course are fairly simple of building a certain number of homes and essentially just building whatever's on screen but a lot of people were asking in our live streams and videos about how to upgrade that way lastly there might be something about uh, building the manor too we'll go over this a little bit more in detail but essentially if you're wondering how to build the manor just in case there's questions below you can build your bailey fence around your manor so build your fence it doesn't have to be this big, by the way, but I just built it because the land kind of, you know, is shaped that way. So you can build your bailey fence around it. Your lord's manor needs to be built into the side or into the corner of one of the fencing. And your gatehouse can go towards the end. Uh, essentially, it'll say that you're disconnected from the road network, but sometimes there's a way and sometimes there's not a way to build from the gatehouse uh, a road in, inside the bailey. So as you can see, the area is actually marked. It's like when you paint a district in city skylines. 
So this here essentially allows you to build things like the tax collector. And one of your final goals may be to continuously pay the king. So here we have an annual tax of five. It's due every 365 days of the year. You'll need to have money in the treasury, not necessarily your regional wealth, but your treasury. So you'll need to be able to tax your people. So to build the tax office, you'll need to build the bailey, the gatehouse, the manor house, and then your tax collector, to which you can just turn on and off. Um, once you've got enough silver, you can basically just stop taxing people. Right now, you can only do uh, family tax, and you can also, well, this is kind of not really worth it at the moment, but a way to generate influence will be the church, and you can generate silver uh, to influence by giving it to the church, and, um, well, you can spend it, but you can't do that in the demo. But the way it'll work is, of course, you'll be able to gain influence with the church by giving them money, and then you can basically move into these other regions. Now, in the future of the game, we'll be able to do all sorts of different things to gain these regions. We can go to war over these regions. We can claim them with influence, or we can claim them with favor. So it's kind of an easy way to generate um, a way to conquer more and more of the map. So in this game mode, there's no other uh, cities on the map. So we have to either trade off-map, which is a very limited trade routes in the corners, which I assume all of our starting points will then have to be in the corner which is like two of the uh, regions landlocked here. And some of them might not have trade routes, so it must be uh, regions that are actually connected to a trade route. But anyway, yeah. So that's going to be a great way to be able to upgrade a lot of your homes. That should be a way to get additional food, not to mention farming multiple different ways will get you a lot of different, um, a lot of different uh, food types so you don't have as much starvation, which is a very challenging thing going from your natural sources to building a farm is quite difficult because you need to at least have like maybe 10 people to do the farming preferably six to seven doing the uh, fields and then of course you'll need somebody in the windmill and then you also need to make bread bread is op super super powerful check this out we've got over 4,000 grain in storage and i've made 863 bread and tons of veggies wish i had more meat but we have eggs for that and also 69 milk nice nice so keep in mind that not everything farming-wise is done at a farm. You can get away with having lots of extra food by just doing these upgrades. But it is a grind, and it's fun, and it's Manor Lords, and it's out now on Steam. So make sure that you download the demo, which is out now on Steam, from October 3rd to October 10th, 2022, for Steam's next event. Hopefully there'll be more demos and upgrades and such in the future of the game. There's no combat at the moment, but there are the ability to build certain things, including military towers. So if you'd like to build that, make sure you uh, keep in mind that it doesn't really do anything, but it certainly looks cool to build a garrison tower, to which you can build that in the middle or on the edge. Cool. Very, very nice. Oh, we can only have one. Oh, well. Anyway, that's it for me now. Thank you very much, everybody, for subscribing, becoming members. Thanks for hitting the like button. If you have any questions, if you have any tips, if you have anything that would help anybody on day one or their thousandth game in the day, let us all know down below in the comment section tips about building roads tips about building more free looking houses to which yes this gridiron not looking pretty but it worked and helped to teach us a lot so i have happened to do more uh, tutorials there'll be more on farming there'll be more on uh, military and stuff like that in the future like how to build in more greater detail that defensive structure so thanks again everyone for watching i'll see you soon